Welcome to the Hinton Municipal Library's TD Summer Reading Program, COVID version. If for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tara and I work at the Northern Rockies Museum right here in Hinton. And uh, we are working together with the library to bring you seven sessions of some really fun stuff. And this week, we are going to be creating ladybug houses. So for everyone who has a package, which got delivered Monday, so I hope you got them, you should have, we have a supply list. You can also find this on our website, and it tells you absolutely everything that you need to take part today. So in the bag, if you are able to register, um, you will find the following. You will find a wooden box, which looks wooden box. You will then find a glue gun. You will need to remove it from its plastic, it's brand new, and plug it in. Let it warm up. You will also find a uh, glue sticks. They are for your glue gun. And then you will find pine cones of various sizes, and they look like these, or little teeny tiny ones. And there are also instructions in it of what you need to do. So the first thing that you need to do is to go stick hunting for sticks of different sizes from different tree types. And I'll show you what I've collected. So I have this one. And I have this one. And try to collect them early so they're not wet because we had so much rain. Because you can't really glue down wet things. You can try, it just won't work as well. So I also said to collect more pine cones or other dry forest materials. So I actually picked up some rocks. And some little pebbles. And I have some moss. You could get some old man's beard. Do you guys know what old man's beard is? It's that moss that's hanging off the branches of um, a lot of different deciduous trees. And, um, or sorry, evergreens. Mm. Off of evergreens. <laughs> Uh, and it's called Old Man's Beard because it looks like the straggly old man's beard, I guess. Uh, you could pick some of that, it would be great. And then I also have some big chunks of bark that I'm going to use in my ladybug house. So once we have that all together, then you're going to need some things to color with, but only if you want to. You don't need to. So I've brought my red and black Sharpies because I want to make my ladybug, look, my ladybug house it's very inviting to my ladybug friends. So that's everything that we need. If you have all your supplies together, then let's get making this ladybug house. Another principle that you will be able to find on our website is this absolutely gorgeous ladybug poster. And who do you think? For those of you who know the library, who do you think drew all of these ladybug pictures? It wasn't me. This was Maddie. And you guys are going to meet her for the last four weeks of the sessions. You're going to be hanging out with me for the first three. So first up are all these ladybugs. Did you know that we have this many ladybugs living in Alberta? I didn't. Not until I started looking into it. And then I was like, okay, I only thought there was one. I think the one I kind of thought, like looking at all these pictures, if you have the printable, take a look at it. Try to think which ladybugs have you actually seen? For me, it's kind of this guy, the winter. He looks the most familiar. And some of these, I wouldn't even say look like ladybugs because I don't recognize them. But maybe I've seen them and I didn't know what they were. And did you know that ladybugs are actually a good bug? Actually further, did you know that ladybugs aren't bugs at all? They're beetles. So some places call them lady beetles. We called them lady beetles on our poster so that we could be very scientifically correct because we refer to them as ladybugs, but they're not bugs. And some places call them ladybirds, because they can fly, but they're not birds. Lady beetles, I know, I know. So these houses that we're gonna make for our ladybugs are a place for them to overwinter in, because during the winter, they actually hibernate. I didn't know that either, ladybugs hibernate. So they hide under rock and debris or inside buildings like cracks in bricks and stuff so that they can hibernate and stay nice and safe for the winter. 
But let me show you the one that I made before so you can all see what we're going to make. And look, I wrote home. And I made it look like a ladybug. I know. And I drew a little ladybug on the top. And yes, I drew it. You can tell it's me because it's not good. But all I did was I glued all my stuff inside. Now, standard rules of glue guns. This is very important. Do we touch the hot end? Is it hot back here? No. Is this part hot, the handle? No. Is this part hot? Yes. Do we touch that part? Mm -mm. Do we lick it? No. Um, do we squeeze hot glue onto our hands? We only put the glue where we want the glue to go. It is now time to make our ladybug house. I would like you to grab your box. And in my case, I have to take out all of that stuff that I showed you so that I can start. Glue gun. Make sure it's plugged in, make sure it's warm, and be very, very careful with it. Everyone can use a glue gun, just have to be smart about it. Don't put it on a surface you don't want things to get stuck to. So if you're at your mom's nice dining room table, don't put the glue gun down. Get a paper plate or a plastic plate or something that your mom won't get mad at if you put a hot glue gun on it. And if you need help, ask for help. Everyone will be happy to help you with your glue gun, okay? So if you're feeling unsure, don't worry about it. Just ask for some help, it's okay. But I want you to hold it very carefully. This is your trigger finger. You're gonna squeeze very gently and dispense a little bit of glue, okay? I want you to pick, pick your first stick and we're gonna put glue at the top of the box and at the bottom of the box and we're gonna glue down our first stick, just like this. And now we're gonna glue another one and another one and another one and another one and we're just gonna keep going until we fill up the whole bottom of the box. I'm gonna try a pine cone now. I'm gonna glue my pine cone down. I like that there. You get to be as creative as you want with this. And do you know why we gave you a poster of all the ladybugs? Well, we want you guys to go out into the woods and try to identify them. Try to find all 27. And when you do, I want you to write it down in a little book and say where you were, what you saw, what it looked like, but don't take it with you. So do you know why ladybugs are called a gardener's friend? Usually gardeners don't like bugs because usually bugs eat the plants they're trying to grow. I know that I sometimes have problems with aphids, which is why I like ladybugs, because ladybugs eat aphids. They eat between 30 and 40 aphids a day, and in a lifetime, can eat over 5,000. Yes, please. That way, my plants are safe from aphids, because I don't want to lose the plants I'm working really hard to make and grow to an aphid. I'm not growing it for him, I'm growing it for me. I'm gonna use a really big stick now, because I want to, and I'm gonna layer them on top of each other so that I can create little nooks that maybe the ladybugs might like. Remember, we're just creating a house where hopefully a ladybug might want to live. I've never had a chance to talk to one, so I'm trying to do my best guess here. Now, as your glue gun goes down, you'll notice it's not sticking out the back anymore. You're gonna have to put in a new glue stick, and that's okay. We can put in a new glue stick super easy. You can see that the glue stick has slid down. You're gonna grab a new glue stick and you're just gonna slide it in the back. That's it. Don't push, just slide it in. All done. That's all you gotta do. Very easy. But again, no touching the hot end. No putting hot glue on your fingers. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt a lot. So sometimes I put the hot glue directly in the box and sometimes I put it on the object that I'm putting in the box. Either way, I want you to be super careful, okay? Now I'm gonna put the moss in and I'm gonna squeeze a line of glue along the bottom where I think my moss is gonna squish in. I'm gonna put a fair amount, you can see it there. 
And then I'm just gonna squish my glue down, or my moss, down on top of it. Oh, I like that. That's good. And then I'm just gonna keep going with my sticks. So, did you know that not all red and black marked and round insects are ladybugs? There are imposters. I know. I know. I was shocked too. Some of the most notorious ones that look like them are actually leaf beetles. They're bad in my garden. Tricky little bums. So I see them and I don't identify them properly and I go, oh, I got ladybugs. I'll have less aphids. Nice. And then I look closer and I realize the leaf beetles and they're eating my plants. Not mine. See. Mm-hmm. But we need to be careful with ladybugs. There are threats to them. Ladybugs are pretty harmless. They eat aphids. What could possibly be their enemies? Well, pesticides. Pesticides, do you guys know what a pesticide is? Well, it's a bug spray. So rather than inviting ladybugs in to help them take care of an aphid problem, some people spray all of their gardens with something called pesticides, which kill everything including the good bugs. So we have to be very careful about when we choose to use pesticides and why and where and what are we killing when we do it. Because maybe it's something that is nice and we don't want to hurt. Like ladybugs or lady beetles or ladybirds or whatever we want to call our friends. And then I'm going to put some of this on top. Work. You see, I'm just gluing along. I like it. Looks good to me. So, remember how I said we gave you the poster so that you could go out and observe ladybugs and keep track of what you see? Well, how do you find a ladybug? Unless one happens to land on you, if you're lucky enough that one lands on you. But what if you go looking for ladybugs? How do you find them? Well, an excellent way to do it is to actually grab a net, if you're lucky enough to have like a butterfly net, and you can just sweep it along the branches or tall grass, and you might get very lucky and find some ladybugs. I need some more glue, so again, hold my glue stick and just slide this into the end, and we're good. I'm a little early, too early. I'll need more glue in a second. So you can do it that way, or, you can borrow a white sheet, and I say white only because it's easier to find if you have camo sheets and you do this. It might be a little harder to find that ladybug. So, white sheet, just borrow it. You're gonna clean it, it's okay. You're not gonna like throw it in a mud pile and like ruin your mom's best sheets. Ask for permission first. And you're gonna lay it underneath a tree or a bush, and then you're gonna grab a big stick, and this is the fun part. You're gonna beat the branch that's above the white sheet. Nicely, you don't have to destroy it. You're just gonna whack it a few times. And then go check out your sheet, see what you find. It's a really great way to find spiders too. Another way is to use an umbrella. And you open the umbrella upside down, and then you just shake the branch and see what falls into the umbrella. And you'll usually find a lot of spiders, especially from trees, but you might get lucky and find some new species of ladybugs, which would be very cool. Now I've got it. I'm just gonna put in a couple more rocks here. And I'm just trying to create something pretty, but also something that tells the ladybug there's places to hide in here. And you can fill it up as full or as little as you want. It doesn't have to be full full if you don't want it to be, or it can be busting full. Ladybugs are little. They don't need a ton of room. And then if you collect ladybugs, you can actually bring them home and introduce them into your ladybug house and see if they like living there. And if they do, well then maybe you're lucky and you're gonna have ladybugs living at your house. Which if your mom's a gardener, or your dad, or your aunt, or your grandma, or your new best bud, maybe they're gardeners, then maybe you help them have a better garden. So here's what I have. I'm gonna flip it around because I kind of like it this way. It's very full got tons of stuff in there, but how are we gonna hang this up? Well, in your bag, I forgot to show you, is a little, a little chunk of string. So I have to cut mine, because I didn't cut some yet. 
to do it right now. So you got a piece of what's known as jute rope. So it's natural, it's not gonna rot, and it's not gonna hurt anything. So I want you to tip your box on its side, and I want you to take your end and put it through the corner. And then I just want you to tie a reef knot. So put your string through this corner that's on your box, and you're gonna go right, over left, and under. And then you're gonna go left, over right, and under, and pull. Reef knot. Now we're gonna do it on the other side, okay? Same thing, just gonna scoop it under. If you didn't fill it up with stuff, and I almost did, close call, there's a rock right there. And you're gonna do right over left and under, and left over right and under. And you're just gonna make a quick little reef knot. They hold very well. And then you have your string. So you can hang up your ladybug bug, ladybug house on your fence or against the side of your house. You want to put it away from us wind. So in uh, in our neck of the woods, on a north or a south facing wall is usually a better option. South facing is the absolute best because it gets a lot of sun, and in the winter it usually helps the ladybug stay just a teeny bit warmer because minus 40 is cold. Now's your chance to decorate it any way you want with your Sharpies. They don't have to be red and black. They don't have to be anything if you don't want them to be. And uh, there you go. We've made ladybug houses. Immediately after this video has gone live and we're done here, um, we are going to open up registration for next week and next week's TD Summer Reading Series, which is Survival Kit. And I'm going to show you guys what to do if you get lost in the woods. And you might think, never going to get lost in the woods. But I'm going to show you how easy it is to happen. Just when you think everything is fine, there's always a chance. And better to be prepared and know what to do than to have no idea what to do if it happens. So we're going to run my Getting Lost program and what to do if you get lost in the woods. And we're going to create survival kits. We have room for 15 kids next week. So run over to the link that will also be down below and make sure you get registered as soon as you can and you will get all the pieces to a very basic survival kit, but I will tell you the things that you can add to it. And at the end of this video, we are going to also include a list of books that you can borrow from the Hinton Municipal Library all about ladybugs because they're fascinating. I read about ladybugs for about a week and a half, and every time I learned something new. Ladybugs are fascinating. Lady beetles, I'm sorry. Perhaps we should give them the title they deserve. They are not bugs, right? They're beetles. I hope you guys enjoyed making a ladybug house with me, making spaces where animals can share in our backyards and we can benefit from them and protect them. It's a win-win for me. It's a win-win for the bugs, so. Ladybug houses. Easy, fun. I hope you guys enjoyed collecting the sticks that you needed to do it with me today. I hope you took time to look around the woods. Maybe you saw a woodpecker. Maybe you saw animal tracks because there's a hint in what I just said for what week three is. I'll announce it next week, but it's really fun and you guys are going to love it. It's a skill that is completely useful and um, pretty fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I cannot wait to see you next week. Please email me your ladybug tips, your clues, your facts, your fun and interesting ideas about ladybugs. And if you have any suggestions for us, we want to hear it too. Welcome to the TD Summer Reading Program through the Hinton Municipal Library in cooperation with the Northern Rockies Museum and our Learning Railway. Books available from the Hinton Municipal Library all about ladybugs include Ladybugs, Red, Fiery, and Bright by Mia Posada, Ladybugs by Marie She, Ladybugs by Sean Smith, Ladybugs by Aaron Frisch, there's a theme here, Ladybugs by Taya Feldman, Ladybugs by Nessa Black, and many, many more. You can check out their catalog at trackpack.ab.ca. If you have any more questions, give them a call. They are more than happy to help you and will help you find 
any books about ladybugs.